I've always wanted to know where the money came from. My entire childhood, I was told, Kevin, if you want to be successful, you can be. Just watch what successful people do and copy them. You can be anything you want to be if you put your mind to it. Well, for years now, I've been studying Grant Cardone, Cardone Capital, Cardone Acquisitions, Pacific Five Star, Pinewood Holdings, all of the companies related to Cardone Capital to try to understand and get to the bottom of where did the money come from? But first, it's important to know that to get into big deals, 32 plus unit deals, to get into big real estate, you need a lot of money. Most people who invest in big deals already have big money. That's why they're called accredited investors with a minimum net worth of a million dollars outside their own personal residence. These are usually successful doctors and lawyers and people who have already built wealth and now they're just looking for an easy place to park their money. And I don't fault them. Why would you work your entire life only to continue going to work at the grind of real estate? Why not just have somebody else do it for them? pay the management fee, that 65-35 cut. Well, we already knew this to be true with Grant Cardone as well. We knew that a lot of his initial wealth after he hit rock bottom at about 25 came from his success in car sales, but not just his success in car sales, which ended up being relatively short-lived in the scheme of his career, but rather his success in selling seminars and corporate sales advice and consultations to help companies sell more cars, sell more over the phone, sell or be sold. So it's certainly true that the income from these sources helped initiate some of the deals he was able to be a part of. But what's in here led to a breakthrough. What's in here is something that's hidden in plain sight, yet nobody talks about it. Because folks, the big deal is the way to start. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know what's in this bag. It's just the Trader Joe's bag. I had to pay money for it now because I live in California. So of course, some initial wealth that facilitated the purchasing of say his first 38 unit apartment deal in San Diego for $1.9 million came from the success and wealth of his seminar career. Much like many successful investors, as I mentioned previously, start a successful career and then invest the money they have. But folks, $350,000 down, $500,000 down, a million dollars down, does not get you into a 500 unit apartment deal. It doesn't get you into a 100 unit apartment deal. It doesn't get you into a 1,016 unit apartment deal. Something else gets you to that level. And I could be wrong. After all, I'm just some guy on the internet that makes YouTube videos in a dark room with a bright light in his face. But I'm some guy on the internet with a Trader Joe's bag. So let me reveal to you exactly where the money came from. Because that 38 unit deal in San Diego with that $350,000 down payment back in the 80s was small potatoes compared to what put Grant Cardone on the map, compared to what created the opportunity for Cardone Capital to come into existence today. 38 unit apartment deal isn't going to get you financing on 100 unit apartment deals. It's not even going to get you to the negotiating table with sellers of those deals. It's not going to get you partnerships. Grant Cardone closed one of the largest private equity deals in Florida's history. And the deal consisted of not just one building or a complex with multiple buildings, but instead five complexes, 1,016 units, for $59 million. Now you ask, how do you go from the relatively small deal of 38 units in San Diego to this massive portfolio acquisition of 1,016 units? In order to start such a fund, you need to come up with your own, say 15, 18, maybe even 20 or 22% of your own money to make that deal happen, to get investors to have faith that you have skin in the game, that you are involved, that you are not going to lose investors' money because by doing so, you would be losing a lot of your own money by doing a big deal. So for you to put that signature down, you gotta have the numbers in the bank first. But where did they come from? What the f Wrong bag. Ah, here's the Grant Cardone bag. Oh yeah. Gotta read that one one day. Or maybe this will tell me all I need to know. Hmm. There's a deed here to a property he bought in 2003 
Must be a pretty big property. I mean, he paid 7.35 million for it. Looks like he got a loan of 4.41 million on it, so he put about 2.79 million in. Still a far cry from being able to come up with a funding for a $59 million deal, but you know, that was 10 years later, so let's see what happened over the next 10 years. Let's see, deeds, deed, married property filed, married, married property as sole and separate property of Grant T. Cardone. Hmm, okay. Refinance in 2004 for 4.4 .4 million. So he didn't pay off any principal yet. Ah! Deed from August 24th, 2012. Sale deed. A grant deed, as they're known in California. Looks like the property sold for just over $17 million. Wow, that's, that's nice given that the economy just went through a recession from 2007 to 2011. 2012, a sale for almost $10 million more. Nice. Must have raised the rents on this property or maybe done some major capital improvements or uh, something really incredible. I mean, 10 million bucks, that's a great ROI. I mean, that's that's almost a million bucks every single year, especially if he considers the principal pay down on the mortgage. You know, he paid off for at least 400 grand, so that's, that's a million bucks a year. Factoring out selling costs, he probably cleared 13 million bucks on this property. Hmm. So this was an August 24th, 2012 deal. And obviously making a million dollars a month in profit is a pretty good deal. So I immediately decided, you know, let me look up the parcel number and see what this deed relates to and let's see what we find. Oh my God. It's a single family house. Never ever buy a house. It's a death trap. It's not freedom, it's not a dream. And it's a place that traps money. It doesn't multiply money. One door. One sad ass person shows up to this house. It's you! Don't be stupid, dude. You're not bringing new money with you. What? What? If it's got one door, what do I say? If it's got one door, don't invite the whore. So after after that, I had to put, put my thinking cap on and really see, okay, where, where, where did the money go? When, when, when was this 59 unit deal bought? Because there were $13 million of gains from a single family house that he did nothing to, given that the original listing said the house was immaculate and renovated, and the second listing said exactly the same thing. Okay, okay, well, Kevin, Kevin, hold on, hold on. Thir 13, clearing $13 million doesn't mean he cleared $13 million. I mean, what, what about taxes? I mean, he would have had to have paid capital gains taxes on it, right? Well, then again, he did have offices and other residences, so it is possible that this property could have been deemed as just a vacant rental property, and oops, I guess I had to 1031 tax deferred exchange all of these $13 million in gains and just oops, not pay any taxes for right now, I'll just pay those taxes later, which would really give him control on the entire $13 million, which, wait a minute, if he bought a $59 million deal and he had $13 million to play with using just $2.7 million from his seminar business, which I will give him credit, was very, very successful. That means he had a 22% down payment on this deal. So he would only have to raise maybe another 12% of investor capital to get financing on this 59 unit deal and put himself on the real estate syndication map and get the attention of JP Morgan, of BlackRock, and for people to take him seriously. But, but, but wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. Ah, this, this is just too overwhelming. So I decided, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let me look at the time frames because when you do a 1031 tax deferred exchange and, and I'm not saying by any means that this is what happened, this could be totally wrong, this is speculation, but uh, the most important part is, is I wanna try to trace how the money came about for this, what was called the Harbor Portfolio at the time, that largest private equity deal in Florida in 2012 or at the time to date. $59 million for over a thousand units. I mean, great, great, awesome, huge deal. But where'd the money, if it came from a single family, and let's say it 
was considered a rental for, say, tax deferred exchange purposes, meaning no taxes had to be paid at the time of sale, then the sale dates should align. So, oh my gosh. The house closed escrow August 24th, 2012, and 88 days later, which happens to be within the 180 day time frame for a 1031 exchange, Grant Cardone announced the closing of the Harbor portfolio. Now, now look, it's, it's possible, maybe he did pay his share of taxes. I mean, I, I'm sure he, he likes to pay his fair share of taxes. You guys don't like the IRS? Who doesn't like the IRS? I say, do you like the IR and the S? No. Do you hate the IR and the S? No. I hate them. Dude, I, I hate them and I'll make a damn video about them. I hate them. Hate them. Video right now. I hate you. Got it. I don't want to pay you and I will do everything to educate myself so that I never pay you ever again. Yeah. And by the way, you're stupid if you do pay him. I'm sure he could have come up with the money some other way. I mean, it was just a small head start of $13 million. I mean, Donald Trump got just a small loan of a million dollars from his father. I guess at least it's some kind of head start. But a single family house? I guess it makes sense because even according to the announcement article, Grant Cardone proclaims that the United States is heading towards being a renter nation. Grant Cardone is talking about the exact same divergence, the same wedge, and is seeing the same thing of the United States becoming a renter nation of basically the wealthy controlling real estate as what I've been talking about on my live streams on this channel and am planning strategies for to release as part of my real estate investing course. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's all making sense now. For the duration that the market continues its ascent, which by no means will I say that I'm a prophet that can tell you when the market is going to fall or how long the market is going to continue to rise, but what I can say is for as long as the market continues its ascent, this divergence will continue to exist. And Grant Cardone's success is heavily attributable to the realization of this back in 2012 and the power of real estate that he's known longer than he's known his wife. And you don't necessarily have to agree with any of the conclusions made here or implications, they're just my opinion, I could be completely wrong. But the bottom line is, everybody has to start somewhere to get big. Grant Cardone just started with a single family dwelling. And let's just remind you, watch what successful people do and copy them.